joining me in another business update. I really appreciate you joining me every week at midday on Thursday, as obscure a time as it is. And of course, for the people that then watch it later on because you're not available at midday on a Thursday. I really appreciate all the people that watch and get a live update on our business. I've talked a lot about evolution lately, um, about evolution in business, about evolution process, about evolution in almost everything we do. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this, but you know, a year ago, of course, I had to put two of our businesses into administration, Clean Easy and Betterware. And this is not a negative statement, it's just a year ago, and it's evolution because I had to do what I did then, um, because the business demanded to take those actions and the, as, a, as the only director of business of both businesses, that's the stance that I had to take, not only an obligation by law, but of course in business terms. But the point isn't about that. A year goes very fast, but it's the evolution we've made since then. And of course, since opening our brand new business, the constant evolution. And one of the things I've always talked about is our ability to change, adapt, and be flexible. You know, even when things are going wrong, change, adapt, and be flexible. And it's one of the most rewarding things in this business that we can do that because for many years working in corporate situations and wor working in huge corporations change adaptability and flexibility is very rarely possible it just doesn't happen not without approval not without hundreds of people signing these processes off whereas here in our new business where evolution is concerned we can constantly make changes constantly adapt and constantly be flexible you know i sent an email out yesterday explaining an update on where we were on our new systems and so on and in that email i said please contact me direct if you have any questions any burning trauma that haven't been answered by anybody, please feel free to contact me. And many of you did. And, and you know, it might take me six years to reply to all the messages, but I will reply to every single one. You see, in my humble opinion, that is also evolution, that people in the business can always make direct contact. That door will always be open. And I apologize that I don't always get back immediately because of course, you know, I, I do get a lot of communication, but I will reply to every single one of them, even some of the sillier questions. But that's OK. Don't let that put you off. Honestly, you can call me, contact me any time. You know, we're here to run this business together. Most of you that are, are in the business are still pioneers in the business, which means we're in this together, changing, adapting and being flexible in the business. And now, even if we just talk about our catalogs, you know, where we started in the business, how, you know, and how we've evolved since then. And I know it's quite a contradiction to say that evolution is going back to basics, but it did because this little catalogue, I mean, all the catalogues do well, but this little catalogue is producing some phenomenal results. But you know what that does? It gives us the indication that this kind of product um, is very, very, very saleable in our business and to our customers. And that's where change, adapting and flexibility comes in. And that's the evolution that you can do that, take something on board and move with it. But it's not just there because you can't just always rely on what you think the customers always want. You have to also improve prove what they want. In other words, you have to put an idea in their mind of what they could possibly want. And I know we've been talking a lot about eco-friendly products. Um, and I think that is vital for business, commercial terms, but on a more um, on a more less commercial sense, of course, is vital for the environment. And of course, we all care about that. But eco-friendly is important in our um, commercial world today. And let me just share with you some of the um, products, just a, ve a, a very vague selection of products that you will see in the outdoor book, which is coming your way towards the end of April, maybe the first week of May, but about around that time because we're having one or two production challenges. But I'll keep you updated on that and I'll send you an email next week about exact timings. Now, this is what's called, just a simple page for me, this is what's called a fair trade 
collection. Now, if you look at what fair trade stands for, it is as it says. It's about allowing people to make things and trade fairly upon those um, upon good terms. So, if you see that as a typical page um, from what some of the eco-friendly products, no, that isn't a selection of my family there. And yes, I can say that, but these, it, it just demonstrates the story behind that particular product. Now, that is recycled fabric. Uh, it's a birdhouse. And it says there, a little becomes a lot because it's what it not only does with the environment, but it's how it helps uh, communities put these products together. And I think it's going to be a, an interesting niche for us to go into to be able to have these kind of products. For me, I'm particularly excited about it, not because of the family, but certainly because I think we'll be among the first to start talking about these kind of things and really emphasizing this fair trading um, uh, thing that we can do with, with the environment and with communities. And that's just one example of it. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's colorful, it's bright, it's recycled, and of course, it's um, fairly, fairly traded, as it quite rightly says there with the logo. And that's really important. And I think, you know, yes, we have basics and yes, they're working very well. But I think if we open doors, which we can do because we change and we adapt and we're flexible, we open doors with these kind of products. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, OK, so nobody buys them. That's the worst. But the best that could happen is that we create a niche for ourselves and an angle that many other people haven't gone into and you might be thinking oh well you know somebody could see this and go and get something done quickly no it doesn't work like that because big corporations can't do that you know even in clean easy for me to get ideas done and I was in charge of the business still took months and months and months and months whereas you know the great people at HQ that are putting these kind of things together you know we had the ideas just coming up with the showcase so we're producing this range and let me show you some more where eco-friendly is concerned um, again you know if you have a, if you have a quick look at that that gives you an example if you can see that that gives you an example of the look of the page not only telling the story of how these products are created but fairly traded recycled products and I think that's going to be really important I don't, I don't know if you can get a proper view now let me just show you this one again just in case you didn't get a proper view because I just realized you may not have had a proper image and I know how Jeff Owen likes to take photographs to then uh, publicize everywhere else so um, if you have a look at that it not only shows a product in full color it shows a story behind it and it's fairly traded and it's recycled um, you know as I said, you know, yes, we have a lot of cleaning products. We have a lot of basic products. We have a lot of products that are everyday products. But I think if we can open some doors with these kind of products, like I said, what's the worst that can happen? We don't sell any at all. That's the worst. But the best that can happen is that we open a huge door for ourselves and start becoming known as a company that can be changing, that can be adapting, and that can be flexible. Um, and I've got one. One more page to show you again it clearly states 100% eco-friendly and remember you can't just go around bandying um, um, logos like that if something says 100% eco-friendly then it truly is great for commercial terms and great for environment terms but if you have a look at that really want you to look at the the colorfulness of the page as opposed to what it's trying to sell I mean the products are important as well you know bright products um, but that to me is the important thing there you know 100% recycled um, and of course these products have a story behind them in the communities that they're made and they're fairly traded which again is vital for that kind of niche that we're trying to build um, as weeks go by and we're not far from the release of that catalog I will tell you give you more but remember we're putting up to about I think up to about 300 products in that catalog and some of them are going to be of that nature now that's what I call evolution you know we only had the idea not long ago you know many of you distributors gave us some of those ideas 
Um, so we're going down that road, not only with those, but some of our chemicals as well. Um, because I think, like I said, you know, being new, having this ability to change, being adaptable and being flexible, and of course, listening to people because, you know, you do give a lot of suggestions. I know I always um, joke about some of the silly suggestions, but, you know, you do give some really powerful suggestions and the amount of people that have been talking about, you know, the environment and being eco-friendly. So, you know, look, it's a beginning. Just remember, it's a beginning. And we've got quite far to go with things like that but i think you'll be pleasantly surprised in the color and the imagery and the and my family on there of course <laughs> and 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 the stories behind some of what we're trying to do um so product eco-friendly outdoor coming your way soon i'll send you an email some point next week to give you the exact date because some of you've been asking because i've been alluding to the end of april but i'll give you the exact date it'll be give or take a day there or so because you know these things have got to be designed and then they're produced and the products have to come in it's, it's quite a hell of a process um of course where um systems and things are concerned i sent you the latest update last night i don't have a new update today only because as you know, we work with um, United States based software companies, as I stated in the email yesterday. And so my first conversation with them isn't until one o'clock when they wake up New York time. So I'll probably send an update email today, hope, hopefully making more progress. You know, with any of these things, you know, you always have a vision of where you want to go. Sometimes everybody else who has to work with you on that doesn't always have that same vision. Now, um, and that's always the case in business. So I'll give you a, an update on that today once I've had those conversations at one and four o'clock. But it's making progress. Uh, you know, we are gradually getting there, whether it's products or whether it's systems, whatever it is, every single day there is progress. You know, in my very early career, which is a long, long time ago, I used to think no matter what you're doing, no matter what business you're in, no matter what your profession is, when you finish for the day, whenever that is, if you've made some progress somewhere, whether it's with a person or a system or the business or with sales or anything, then you've had a successful day. And I'd like to think that we honestly make progress in one area or another every single day of this business. And, and that's a fantastic place to be. And a lot of that's there because, you know, we, we have your support in everything we do. Um, now, nothing, I mentioned future-proof. Many businesses talk about being future-proof. I don't believe there's any such thing as future-proof because you can't predict what the hell is going to happen. Like, um, I don't want to bring politics into this, but like where we are with Brexit, you know, no matter how many cock-ups I make, it's never going to get to the state of where we are with leaving the EU. <laughs> and that's the end of politics there. My point is, nothing is future-proof. Um, this week alone, um, we've seen Debenhams in huge trouble and I know what that feels like having you know worked through that for two years in my previous business which of course many of you are part of um, and of course even huge internet giants like ASOS you know suddenly give this brash statement yesterday that they're 80% down on profits to a measly 4 million which is unbelievable considering at one point there were stock market retailing internet giants no more than two years ago. They're exploding. Um, and so they've sent this shock statement out. Now, that doesn't mean it's the end of network, uh, sorry, of internet sales or anything. Far from it. It just means they've got to adapt and they've got to adapt very quickly to get through that. Now, I sympathize with all that because, you know, they were a huge brand and they still are and they've still got a lot of power. But to do, to, to, but to, to send out a statement to say that 80% down on profits in this first quarter is phenomenal. So my point is nothing is future proof. Not this business, not other businesses, nothing is. Nothing is future proof and many organizations like to use that terminology. But what I'd like to think is that you constantly do things to try and make yourself future proof. The most you can do is try and quickly adapt, quickly change and be flexible. 
I think one of the problems with ASOS was their phenomenal amount of returns. They're just ridiculous numbers. You know, we can't deal with a mop being returned, let alone them dealing with something silly like, you know, 15 million pounds every single week or whatever the ridiculous figure is. But, you know, so they've got to change and adapt to be flexible very, very quickly. And I know what pain they'll be going through. My point is nothing is future proof, but we will do things all the time to try and make things future proof as possible but just this week we've seen the high street suffer we've seen you know um, online sales suffer and and some statements that you never expect to hear in the commercial world so that doesn't make me feel better for the challenges we're having i'm just pointing out that uh, i'm not trying to alleviate the subject all i'm trying to say is you know nothing is future proof but you could constantly do things in evolution to try and make sure you try and stay ahead of the mark and be small enough and quick enough to adapt and change wherever necessary and that's what um, I'd like to think that we have the ability to do so that's what the whole dialogue was about the fact that we can and will do that um, talking of evolution you know we've got our next showcase of course and ticket sales of that are going phenomenally well um, as you know there's a gala dinner and of course there's a showcase 31st of August where we'll bring you the Christmas catalogue which I hope will also be massive evolution from the first one we produced last year which was done in less than three weeks you know we've got a lot more time and we're already working on that um, so where the showcase is concerned of course as you know we developed a theme of um, don't stop me now which uh, I, I think sounds absolutely perfect for where I am personally and where the business is. I don't feel that anything can get in the way. There will always be obstacles. There will always be challenges. I can't imagine never having challenges or obstacles. But the point is not fretting about those, but it's to get around them, get through them, break through them and circumnavigate around them. And that's what business is about. And you have to be able to do that. And I just felt it important to talk about that today because that's one thing I think I've learned just in this business, how amazing it is to be in a situation where you can do that. So talking of meetings, of course, I'm at um, Lynn McDonald's uh, Millionaires this weekend in Scotland. Let me just tell you a little bit about that, because if you can be there, please be there. Um, I'll, I, I'll do my usual update on the business, but then, of course, feel free to ask any questions before the meeting, during the meeting and even after the meeting. I'm there to give you any answers you have. And it's fantastic when you come right up to me to actually ask those questions. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you as honest answer as I possibly can on, on what I know. Of course, we talked about some of the other speakers last week. Lynette is there. Lynette Taff is speaking. Now, the reason I really want to highlight Lynette is that her success has almost been entirely online. Um, not only where selling product is concerned, but recruiting entirely online. And phenom phenomenal little pocket rocket, not that I should really call her that, but she really is. She's absolutely dynamic at what she does. And it's just worth listening to face to face. Then of course, where retail is concerned in general, we have Sharon Davis again, you know, a, 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 a a retail giant in the business, you know, phenomenal amount of retail throughout the track record of catalogs and not just whilst this has been out, but throughout. But again, you know, so worthwhile if you want to make money and you want to learn about the business, aside from all the other speakers there, and there is a phenomenal lineup, just those two alone can show you not only how to run a profitable online business but also how to retail maximum results using our catalog system so it's worth being there and of course feel free to ask me any questions you have um, at the meeting so I'm sure Lynn will post another link to the meeting in this dialogue today if anybody wants to be there that's on Saturday I, I'm really looking forward to it because you know how I feel about meetings. I'd be at meetings every single day if I could because there's nothing like the buzz and the energy and the anticipation of a meeting. And it just fires you up in the business. You learn, but most importantly, you connect with people. And that was what was so phenomenal about our first showcase. It was that pure connection of people, which I'm wanting to then emulate in our next showcase, getting 
people together, making this business a place where people really want to be. Not only want to be to make money, but want to be to be part of that community spirit that you are all evolving out there. So I'll bring you more news later on today where updates are concerned. Um, I'll keep doing that. Feel free to email me anytime you have any question. I'm sorry you don't always get an immediate reply, but you will do. mk at vivamk.com. Many of you got my phone number. It's probably not a good idea to give that out here, um, but many of you got that. <laughs> um, feel free to uh, use that. Um, and that's it, really. Evolution is important in the way we do business. Evolution is important in the way we can change, adapt and be flexible. And in the face of what's going on in the environment today, not the political part, we can't really talk about that. That's a disaster in itself and needs proper integration. But I mean, in the commercial world, you know, there's this disasters going on there. And some of that has been born of the ability to not be able to change quickly, not to be able to adapt and not to be flexible. And they're huge corporations. And this is a wonderful place to be and we will keep being adaptable and flexing. So listen, thank you for listening once again. It's a busy day today. I'll communicate with you later and tomorrow. Next week, I will let you have more specific dates of the catalogs that are coming out. Remember the catalogs I've told you about? It's outdoors and a whole lot more, which has got those fair trade products in. Then you've got um, the next New Beginnings one, which hasn't even got a title, so I'll call it New Beginnings 2. Then, of course, later in the year, there's New Beginnings 3, and they're the bigger, more staple catalogs. And in between all that, there'll be a Christmas catalog, and there will also be a second edition basics. And I'll give you very much more specific dates and uh, timings on those at some point next week. But anyway, thank you for listening as always. You know, I and none of us could do any of this without your interaction and your support and your flexibility and adaptability with us. It all goes hand in hand. No one person could ever do anything like we're attempting. And, um, you know, it's clearly working. And again, in the next few weeks, um, I'll give you a full update on numbers and where we are um, in respect to sales and everything else. Once I've got those myself, I will share those with you. But again, of course, thank you for listening and I'll uh, catch up with you very soon. Thank you. Bye bye.